uh, a little late now to pick up recording. Yes, it's, I think, yes, recording now. There we go. Okay. So uh, for those of you who are just joining us in the recording, I'm sorry, we didn't start recording at the beginning, but we will touch uh, some of the points we've touched earlier. So one thing we're talking about now is this website by Hofstede, which let me share that, is going to be here. Okay, um, this Hofstede website, so it's uh, Hofstede, H-O-F-S-T-E-D-E dash -E insights.com, or you can just do a Google search for Hofstede Compare Countries. And the Compare Countries tool works like this. You can type in a country, so for example, United States, and then you can compare it to one or more countries. So let's do like uh, South Korea. It shows you how the United States compares to South Korea and that, you know, the United States tends to be a more individualistic society. Um, there's not as much of a power distance in the United States. We're a more masculine society, less um, certainty avoidant, um, less long term oriented and more indulgent. And it will even give you specifics about that particular country there. So this is a really good tool as an introduction to the kind of culture differences that you might anticipate. I always recommend, again, either reading along with this or um, you know, reading a book to, to kind of explain these more and to explain these concepts or taking the class 2310 that I mentioned before. Okay, so that's that. And then I'm gonna go back to the presentation again. Here. Okay. So um, I mentioned, whoops, back. It's the culture by taking an Arabic, Chinese, French, German, Korean, Russian, or Spanish 2310 class, books on culture, the hospital website. There are also numerous cultural clubs. We'll see some of those later in, in this presentation that I encourage you to join. There's also the uh, um, UTA Modern Languages Ambassadors, uh, which is a program. Um, it's an outreach program, but also might give you some um, a look inside the different clubs, etc., and contact with them. You can do meetup groups. Meetup is a is a large, uh, I guess, um, organization that provides a online space for people to post meetings, um, that either in, in calendars with meetings online or etc. And you can search the meetup for the Dallas-Fort Worth area and see if they have the language that you're interested in. Those are often free, sometimes there's a small charge. You can also look into charitable organizations and outreach programs, um, especially if you're interested in working with um, areas and cult cultures that have a large representation in North Texas. So uh, people from uh, Mexico or other Spanish-speaking countries, people um, from uh, Vietnam or Africa. There are a lot of French-speaking Africans in the area, et cetera. And of course, there are YouTube videos that can tell you a little bit about cultural differences as well. So that's embracing the culture, too fast. And as far as learning the language itself, obviously I'm going to recommend a beginning language class. Um, these assume you've had no prior experience with the language, although if you've had maybe a year or two, that's okay as well. You can take these for UTA credit, obviously, as a um, to fulfill your language requirement, or as just an elective. You don't have to be a language minor or major to take these. And our beginning level students do really well, so you don't have to be afraid of doing poorly as long as you do your work and are there. We find that our students do. You know, my students in first semester French, probably 50 percent, 60, 70 percent get an A. So just do your work, etc. Our department also offers a really niche but really fantastic program uh, that we did last summer and we'll be doing again this summer called Star Talk. It is a free program for four weeks and you can learn either Arabic or Russian. It's a pretty intense program. Um, they're doing it online this summer, but last summer they did it in person and we'll probably return to that next year. And you can fill out the form, the Star Talk. Um, you can just Google uta.edu Star Talk and it should pull up. The information about it if you're interested in it and if you complete the four-week program and you plan on taking a language class in Arabic or Russian afterwards for credit they will actually give you up to eight credit hours uh, towards that so it's a really fun uh, interactive way 
for free to get maybe a second language if, you, if you're not particularly, you know, if you're not pursuing Arabic or Russian now. There's also the language exchange program that is run, I guess, by the international office. This is where they put together speakers of uh, English with speakers of other languages who want to practice their English so that you can work together. I think that due date for registration for that may already have passed for this year, but you could email them and ask or perhaps, um, you know, try to catch it the beginning of the fall semester. And then again, your meetup groups and language clubs also are a good way to practice language. So any Anybody have any questions so far about any of what I just covered? Not yet? <laughs> okay. All right, good. Okay. Well, we'll just keep going then. These are the, some of the student organizations that you might want to join. Um, these are specifically um, student organizations that practice language as well as doing cultural activities. They will have conversation groups, etc. Um, Arabic, Chinese, Korean, Spanish, French, and Russian. But there were other groups under there's like a Japanese, I think there's a Nepalese cultural society, there's an Asian student organization that's more a broader cultural society, but you can find them by going to mavorgs.uta.edu and then just uh, you can search different categories and they have a cultural category, pull that up and it will have a list of the different groups that you can join. And it should tell you how that you can join them and these are really fun They're also a great leadership uh, opportunity if you want to get into that. So. I definitely, if, you, if you're interested in, you know, exploring a language and culture, I definitely recommend one of those organizations. Um, to help you with your studies, we do have tutoring. UTA Ideas Center offers tutoring in multiple subjects. They do have, I think the only language they offer is Spanish, just because that's the largest. But if you are taking language classes here at UTA, there are, there is free tutoring for language students. Every language we teach has a certain number of free tutoring hours. So, you know, ask about that if you're one of our students. There's also a Spanish writing cen center. If you want some more one-on-one -on -one tutoring, you can always, if you're a club member, you can ask if there's someone who's more advanced who might tutor you, maybe even a native speaker, or you can reach out to a private company like Berlitz or Wise Ant for tutoring. But, you know, just to let you know of the value of this free modern languages tutoring is if you were to contract with someone on Wiseant, you might be paying $50 an hour. You're going to pay at least 40 an hour, an hour for tutoring and you can get free tutoring up to, you know, three hours a week through modern languages. So um, taking a class here is also going to provide you with that additional assistance without additional costs. Okay, you've already touched on study abroad, but I'm going to go ahead and come back around to it here. Um, he mentioned already the difference between faculty led and affiliated programs. I just wanted to say in my experience, the difference between them is um, your affiliated programs, you're going to have a large selection of programs to choose from. And then a lot of those programs like the larger groups like AIFS, etc. They're going to have a large number of classes you can even take in the program. So it's a great variety of programs to choose from. Um, one of the drawbacks with regards to language students is if you do one of the affiliated programs, when you arrive, they will test your language skills. And so um, they will place you on the basis of the test. So you don't necessarily know exactly at what level you're going to test into till you arrive. Uh, as a former advisor, I occasionally had students who did an affiliated program who expected to take, say, junior level language classes, but they only tested at sophomore. And that meant that the language classes they took there did not count towards the credit hours they needed. Still a great experience and you don't have to take just language classes, but just be aware of that little exception. Uh, with your faculty led programs, there are fewer programs and your uh, choice options aren't quite as wide, but you know exactly what you're getting before you go. You do have your faculty guides with you the whole time and they tend to be a small close knit group. This group here is my 2018 uh, group that went to Montreal, Canada. And um, as you can see, we have 14 students here. This is the other professor and myself and we were with them the entire time. Both groups are going to do a lot of, not, not just in the classroom, but a lot of outings, excursions, visits, museums, monuments, that sort of thing. So you're gonna have a great experience, inclusive either way. Let's see, um, and the scholarships he already discussed, so I won't go into that. If you get to the point where you have a little bit of the language on your belt and you're interested in furthering it, teaching English abroad is a great option for, for graduates. 
Um, there are these two programs are quite competitive. The Fulbright English Teaching Assistant Awards and the Princeton in Africa, Asia and Latin America, which I think is a full year of teaching. You for the Fulbright, you need to have a project that you're proposing uh, in order to get one of those uh, awards. These below and these are just examples of others you can look at are still competitive, but maybe not quite to the extent that the Fulbright or Princeton are and quite popular. And we here at UTA have students that every semester, you know, or at least once a year that get accepted into these programs. The English program in Korea, um, there are a couple of different programs in Spain, and then the teaching assistant program in France or TAPIF, uh, etc. cetera. Um, yes, it does help if you've got at least a minor in the language, a TESOL certificate or teaching English or experience tutoring your foreign language is also helpful. You might end up teaching uh, adults or children or high schoolers or whatever. You're assisting most of the time with these programs and not teaching outright. Although there are, once you get there as an assistant teacher, a lot of these, you know, graduates of these programs that are good at finding full-time teaching jobs over there and end up staying or going back later. This website, gooverseas.com slash teach dash abroad, it basically has a list of a lot of different teach abroad programs uh, so that you can sort and find them and read reviews about them. So that might be a good way to choose one. I'd also say talk to someone on campus, especially if you're looking into Korean or one of the languages we teach, French, German, whatever, and see if you have a teacher who has a recommendation about those webs, about the, what's the best program to do. Um, yeah, so I just had a couple of, uh, I'm going to let uh, close here with uh, Addie's experience, but I wanted to read um, some carefully written thoughts by a former, couple of former um, study abroad alumni and what they got out of the experience. And this is Omar, and he said that there is something about being out of your comfort zone in a country whose language you're trying to master that shows itself as an unexpected life lesson. It has to do, in my opinion, with the fact that you're courageous enough to not only be open to engage a different culture from your own, but uh, to also allow yourself to be vulnerable in order to learn. Immersing yourself in a different culture gives you a different perspective in life and your appreciation for other people's cultures and experiences that only comes from, uh, only comes when you experience how others different from you go through life. The study abroad program served as a great support, but at the same time encouraged venturing into the city as an individual in order to provide an authentic encounter with a different culture for your own, a lesson that cannot be simulated in the classroom. And that's true. I mean, there's nothing like studying abroad, but I think you could also take from him this idea that you can experience um, cultural or linguistic, you can, you can engage with others via language or culture simply by being a little more daring and a little less afraid to fail. I think a lot of language students are afraid to make mistakes and so they don't want to look silly and they, but you know what, make the mistakes. Uh, find your, your meetup group or your club or whatever. Find a group of students on campus that you can work with and meet over lunches once a week to practice your Korean or French or Arabic or Chinese or Russian or Spanish or German poorly. And it's okay because the only way you're going to learn to speak is to make yourself vulnerable and take those risks. You might learn to be fantastic at grammar or you might have a lot of vocabulary memorized, but unless you use it, uh, you're not going to advance at the rate that you could otherwise. So take the risks and put yourself out there. And the same thing for the culture. Um, if you pick a study abroad program, you know, the first time you go, you could be a little more cautious with your program, but I think a lot of people find once they've gone a single time, they want to go back. And so you can be a little more daring and do the homestay the second time, or maybe even the first time. Um, push yourself a little, engage with others a little more, and you're going to get a lot more out of your experience with people from other cultures, whether abroad or here. And then I like to close with this one, a former student of mine, um, talking about study abroad. One of my favorite quotes floating around the internet right now is, travel is the only thing you buy that makes you richer. If I know one thing for certain, it's that only good things will come from studying abroad. I could write you a book about the benefits of learning languages in an authentic setting, the importance of experienced travels in our global economy, the spiritual truths we learn while discovering other cultures, 
and how great studying abroad looks on a resume, but these are things you already know. For me, the best part of what happened during my study abroad was the stuff I wasn't expecting. The little mysteries of life that started to unfold when I learned to let go and live in the moment. I didn't master the French language while I was there with UTA, she was there on a five week program, but I did develop a real thirst to communicate, a deep desire to know more. After five weeks of awkward exchanges at the market, getting lost on the subway, speaking to random friendly strangers and ordering a lot of food, I realized that I could do pretty much anything. It was a tiny step, but it was the first step and it was so important. When I went home, I finished my degree with a burning hunger to return. My study abroad trip helped me to get accepted with the teaching assistant program in France, and I was placed in Réunion, Réunion Island. I lived with hosts who took me in as part of the family, and that's how I ended up one sunny day at a birthday party for a man who's not my husband. The mysteries of what your life could be will unfold to you too. You just have to take that first tiny step. And I will say that uh, Jen still is in, she came back from the, um, study abroad program and she ended up going back for Tapif and then she came back for a year and then she went back again for Tapif and I that first month that she was in Réunion she was a mess I mean she was it was a it's you know it's down near Africa it's near Madagascar and she was she was like uh, the French here is so fast and you know I don't know how to get around and and it's really intimidating and I don't know anyone and I have to find an apartment you know <laughs> She was a big of mess and she journaled her way through it. And wow, she's amazing now. Now she lives in Réunion, she teaches uh, English. She also is, competes in mountain climbing and she is a professional diver and all kinds of stuff. And she just, it just really opened her up to this new world. And she eats the foods of the locals and she speaks the local language, including their, uh, not their, their sort of Creole French. So. I think that's it. I think you have to like be daring and put yourself out there. And it's sometimes start with just that first trip and uh, and then you find that it becomes a lifelong uh, habit, I guess. Uh, Addy, I don't know, you want to jump here and say something about getting the most out of language here or abroad, uh, whatever you want to add. I think you're still muted there, Addie. Sorry. <laughs> I think that um, uh, my language skills definitely improved over there because it's, you know, it's not the same here. We have classes and then we go home, but we're not surrounded. We're not forced to use the language. So there were several times I got lost over there and I needed to use my language skills. Um, there were several times where, you know, I had to, you know, uh, order food or go to the movies. And, you know, I, well, going to the movies is like one of my favorite things to do. And that is something going back to the homestay. Uh, in my in my experience, they made us spell out things that we like and they match you with your host parent according to that. So I stayed in a place where there's a bunch of little movie theaters has little theaters too and my host mom used to be an actress a stage actress so that was pretty cool so I figured I need to you know pretend you know or I guess like go to the movies here the way I that I do back in the U.S. so I did that and that was very interesting uh I even saw one of their their movies over there I forgot the title but it was French and it was I had to really pay attention to what was going on um but yeah like everybody mentioned in those in the in their little essays I definitely do want to go back and explore the rest of France I definitely want to explore other francophone countries too uh just get to know you know every bit and part of the culture their people yeah <laughs> it's amazing I don't regret it at all <laughs> And you know that's another thing when when you do it, you know there are some study abroad programs that you're going to feel more engaged with the locals than others, and so that's something you want to look at when evaluating programs, and you're going to base that on what you desire to get out of the program, and also uh, you know do you want a more authentic experience, or are you looking more specifically at one particular niche? So if you're doing London specifically to look at their, um, you know. West End plays, then, you know, maybe you <laughs> maybe you don't need to 
learn that much about it. But then again, you know, challenge yourself even if you think you don't need to learn about that culture. And yeah, there are also a lot of study abroad programs you can go on where they will tell you that, oh, we're just going to be staying in the capitals and doing just the tour things. You're not going to need to know the language. Learn a little bit of the language before you go. <laughs> you know, you might get lost. It's just a good thing to do. It just shows good faith that you've bothered to learn a bit of that culture's language. Maybe you don't have to take a whole class. You know, there you could, like I said, join a conversation group before you go for a couple of months. Obviously, there are people who travel all the time on short notice and don't have time to do that, but I promise you get more out of it if you do study the language somewhat before you go and if you push yourself a little bit to engage. And, and even if you didn't come here to ask about study abroad, remember there are those scholarships and you, you can layer scholarships and quite a few people get scholarships that apply for them and mul often multiple scholarships. The IEFS, I think something like 90% of students that apply for that get it. So, and that's what lowest $1,300 and... It, uh, it depends on the length of the program. It starts around 800 and goes up to 3,500, I think, for okay. full academic year. But yeah, it, I mean, it's, it's a very, we have a lot of applicants, but like you said, uh, a lot of people receive that scholarship. And you can, you know, add that, take that amount and add it to other, you know, we also have students that get some of the national scholarships like the, um, the Boren or the, uh, the uh, Benjamin Gilman, Gilman. Mm -hmm. Gilman scholarship. And then, you know, they've, they've got $6,000 or something, you know, with a couple, two or three scholarships. And we've had students on our Paris program who were like burning money because they're, you know, I'm going to go to this, I'm going to go to that because they had, they had received that much money so they could afford to really engage in everything they could think of. So, you know, don't think, oh, I don't have straight A's and yet apply. Apply. Research those scholarships now. You think you can't get it, you think you won't be able to afford it, start looking into programs now and think about it. But whether you go or not, there are, and if you go, you still need to do this other work before you go. Find the groups that you can exchange with now. You don't want to be dropped off in the middle of a foreign country and do a homestay and not know whether or not, you know, what's the right way to, are you allowed into their kitchen during non-meal hours? Um, is it polite to uh, wear your shoes in the house? Is it is it acceptable to um, you know do your own laundry? Or should you ask someone for that? Uh, how should you dress for certain occasions? Um, what will the shower be like? What were you know you need to ask those questions? And one of our 2310 courses will answer that, or you can read on your own or watch YouTube videos. Take those with a grain of salt though, or um, you know meet with meet with people through meetup groups or whatever. So questions. Yeah, and uh, let's go ahead and stop the recording since we're going to open it up oh. to questions there. Um, uh, I have a question for Ms. Hernandez.